On this vote, the yeas are 200. On this vote, the yeas are 216. The nays are 214. Accordingly, the motion is adopted. Accordingly, the House stands adjourned until noon tomorrow. Oh, it was a chaotic scene last night as U.S. House struggles to agree on adjourning for the night. After six votes, they still have not elected a speaker. I'll try again today. A small group of Republicans continue to refuse to support House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy for speaker, leaving the House in limbo, unable to swear in members, unable to conduct any business at all. SMU political science professor Cal Gilson joins us to talk about this. Uh, this can't be good, can't be a good look for Republicans. I mean, is there anything positive coming out of this stalemate, Cal? Well, it, it doesn't look like it. And if there is anything positive, it's for that small group of conservatives from the House Freedom Caucus that is opposing Kevin McCarthy. They're likely to neuter him as speaker by, by forcing him to accept a series of rules that empower them and disempower him. So if the Republicans with their narrow majority have a leader that can't guide legislation through the House, uh, they're in for a very long two-year period. Ooh, and this is the first time in 100 years that a speaker hasn't been elected on the first ballot. So, I mean, that, that shows you how big of a deal this is. Uh, when you talk about that group of 20 or so Republicans, um, what is it that they have against McCarthy? Like, is it issues? It's not, or is it the man himself? Well, uh, their their complaints are legitimate in the sense that it's the man himself. They mm -hmm. see, and, and I see, McCarthy as not having a principled core. He wants so badly to be speaker and mm -hmm. has for so long that he's made promises uh, to various groups in the House that are in some sense incompatible with each other. And and this group of Freedom Caucus conservatives believe that he will strike deals with Democrats to pass bills on the budget, uh, on spending caps and that sort of thing. And so they have a legitimate complaint against him. But in taking him down this way, uh, they're likely to damage the Republican Party's ability to govern over the next couple of years. If McCarthy doesn't become speaker, say, and Steve Scalise of Louisiana, who is also a conservative, more principled conservative than Kevin McCarthy becomes speaker, uh -huh. perhaps they would see that as a win, but there would be rules in place that limited even Scalise in how he could run the House. And so there are lots of comparisons being made to Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats, Pelosi being a tyrant, forcing the Democrats mm. to, to push through uh, bills when they had the majority. But that, in fact, is what parties do when they have unity and coherence. The Republicans <laughs> don't have that. It's hard to see how they govern the House. Okay, McCarthy is refusing to drop. He says, I am not dropping out, no way. So, and I mean, it just, <laughs> like, what does your crystal ball say? How long is this gonna go on? Well, most of the informed speculation says that it's gonna go on through uh, the weekend. Oh. Uh, McCarthy has already agreed to a number of rules changes that the, the Freedom Caucus people have demanded. Uh -huh. uh, but this is just part of him doing anything he can to get the speakership. So there are people who are sort of torturing him by moving the goalposts and saying we want more. Uh, and so even if he gets it, it's not going to be worth much. If it goes through the weekend and he has to withdraw, it's likely to be Steve Scalise or the man that you just showed, Jim Jordan of Ohio, who becomes speaker. But again, then the question is whether they can recover the authority of the speakership to make the House work in an efficient way. Is this another case of, I don't know, I feel like it was for Democrats and Republicans, like, we just can't agree on a leader. <laughs> is that, I mean, it seems like the Democrats just didn't have exactly the leader they wanted or a new leader that they wanted, and now the Republicans kind of doing the same thing. Is that, is that what's happening? Yeah, there were some Democrats that thought Nancy Pelosi was too old, had been leader for too long, but she faced them down and became the, the speaker again mm. and pushed a bunch of bills through. So the, the coin of the realm 
in congressional leadership is a unified party behind you <laughs> so that when you say this is the play this is the legislation that we're going to try to pass that you have your your party behind you and you can pass that bills if you don't have that then the speakership or any other leader position in congress is going to be more trouble than it's worth more pain than pleasure so republicans are in a very difficult position raising questions about whether they are actually a governing party mm. or are they a party that opposes government governance opposes the federal government and what it uh, it represents and has become uh, so they may be good at opposition right. not good at governance that's what we're finding out <sighs> all right thank you cal for your insight appreciate it all right good to talk to you it